you. I saw your face. I went, hit record, Kelly. <laughs> do not do what I've done before, which is like done the whole thing and then not recorded it. <laughs> or one time I did an entire interview for my podcast and the person left and I went, oh, I never hit record. <laughs> Sorry. If it can be dumb, I can do it. Hey, Patty. So um, yeah, thank you all for showing up. And once again, everybody who's here, do not feel like you have to put your camera on. It's nice for me to have the camera on because then I get to see everybody's face. But um, for all of those who are jumping in over there, awesome sauce. Before we get rolling, uh, I said it once, but I'll say it one more time. If you have any questions that you want me to answer specifically on this call, drop them into the chat and I will, I will answer them at the end, okay? Otherwise, uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. I really appreciate y'all being here. And then in the meanwhile, oh, and I think I said it on, on record, but your handout, if you want to grab it, is also in the chat. Um, afterwards, I will send you an email follow-up with everything in there. So you can certainly um, get the replay and all the good stuff, all the goods afterwards. So... Before I hit the presentation button, I would just like to say, um, I'm excited about this year. And I'm doing something that I don't normally do. I have always had this kind of, um, dare I say, holier than thou attitude about the beginning of the year and New Year's resolutions and all of those things. And just like, I always, I would never do anything at the beginning of the year for fitness, like for a fitness group until about the third or fourth week, because I was like, oh, let's get all that stuff out of the way. And this year I went, you know what, Kelly, you're crazy. <laughs> you're quite crazy because one of the things that happens is that we do have a special I'm going to call it magic. There is a special magic at the beginning of the year because we're, we're thinking about new things. We're thinking about new options. We're thinking about um, it's the middle of winter. And for those of you who are um, in the States or, you know, this, this zone for my friends who are in you know Australia, it's the middle of summer, except they keep saying that it can't, it won't become summer there yet. Um, but it's, there's also this other piece, which is if you ever, and this is kind of woo-woo, but if you ever do anything like moon related, I love the moon. I do. I love the moon. And so the second new moon of the year is when the um, Chinese New Year begins. So there's this, there's this space at the beginning of the year. And there's also this um, opportunity to be kind of quieter if you're, um, if you're, in our zone, um, in the northern zone, because it is, it's a little bit more like winter, it's quieter, it gives you time to, um, gives you time to plan, to think, to come up with things that might work better for you. So that's what we're about today. And um, in the meanwhile, everybody, thank you all for being here. I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share because the person who works with me, um, my on Nico did this amazing presentation for us. And so I'm like, let's use it. So uh, we decided, I, I love the idea that fit is your superpower. I truly believe, I truly believe that when we have our health, then we can make anything else work in our lives. When we don't feel good, uh, it's, it's harder. It's harder. And you'll hit one of my favorite quotes in here. But if anyone and probably all of us have been through it before where um, something isn't working quite right with our bodies, something isn't working quite right with our health, we're not quite feeling it. And it makes life more difficult. So when we feel good, fits our superpower every single time. Um, this is a, a long list for a presentation, but I was just thinking about what happens when you give yourself the gift of fitness. First thing, I always love to look at the cascading effect of good. Like, you know, when you when when you become fitter, healthier, feel better, then all these other things happen, right? But the other things that happen are health, you're healthier, you're happier, you're stronger, you have more energy. Um, you have more muscle and less fat, which is really important for us. Like we need it. We need that muscle. Um, 
you've got better balance and flexibility. Uh, not only do you have improved moods, but you also can lose that extra weight the stronger we become. And we sleep better, we have improved habits because that's part of the cascading effect of good. Um, the better we feel, the easier it is to follow the habits that we wanna do every single time. And then life's just more fun, flat out fun. And <laughs> if there's anything I'm about, it's fun. I love fun. So um, if we haven't met before, I think I've met, I've met some of you on this call already. Some of you I do not know. So my name's Kelly Howard. Uh, I have been become known as the fitness consistency expert with a touch of adventure. And the reason for that touch of adventure is that I really think that it comes back to fun. If we're having fun, if we're having a little adventure in life, if, and adventure can be anything, okay? Adventure does not have to be like, Sharon was with me on an adventure where we were like, you know, trapped on a raft in the middle of a raging river. It doesn't have to be like that. Adventure can be all kinds of things. Okay. Adventure can be taking the grandkids or the kids or the next door neighbors, you know, on a, on a walk in the woods. It can be trying something new. Like adventure is anything, but it's that thing. It's that lanya, like we, like they say in New Orleans or in the South, that it's that special icing on the cake. Um, and then I have also uh, my book, my new book came out last year. I think I've got it over there on my bookshelf. Um, and then that's what I've been doing. And my my job in life, because I have always, I always have the best jobs in life. <laughs> my job in my life now is to help women become active, to help women figure out what they need to do to have that fit that they want. And when I say fit, I mean that fitness, that full on body fitness so that they can do everything that they want to do. That's, that's my job. So I have the best job in the world. Um, and I want to just talk about like the biggest lie that I hear all the time, straight up for, there are two things that people will say to me, three things really. But the first, the first two are people I'll say, well, well, why aren't you focusing on your fitness? I don't have any time. I don't have any motivation. Um, time read my book. I really like, you know, I jump all over that one in my book because I, we all have time. It's just, we don't have priority. Okay. Um, once we make it priority, then we have the time, but motivation, people will say, well, I'm not like you. I'm just not that motivated or I wasn't, I wasn't born motivated or X, Y, Z. Um, it's a learned behavior y'all. And if you think about it, anything, um, for those of you who I see on the screen, do any of y'all ever feel like I'm just not that motivated? Give me like a hands up if you feel that way. Sharon's, okay, fair enough, fair enough, thank you. Um, okay, Sharon, since I know you, <laughs> I'm gonna say, but when it comes to, cause Sharon is this amazing soul who um, saves cats, okay? She rescues cats, she gets some new homes, she gets all these things done for them, but, when it comes to your kitties and finding them homes, you're motivated, right? So we all have motivation. It's just that we have to pick and choose the things that we're motivated for, okay? And I think one of the things about motivation that's so cool is if we can figure out what pushes our buttons to get us motivated, then it becomes super easy. Like a motivation could be uh, your North Star. And your North Star is the thing that gets you excited. It's the thing that that you want to live well, long, and, and just like live in that exuberant life for. Like that's a motivator. Um, other motivators, like that's a, that's a motivator that we move toward. So in general, in general, um, we're either moving towards something we want or moving away something away from something we don't want. So if you have a North Star, that North Star could be, um, it could be that you want to, um, you want to come with me on a, on a um, adventure trip, which I'd love to have all y'all come with me on an adventure trip. But let's say that's one of your motivators. So if that's a motivator, then, then you have to be in a certain shape to do it, right? But then there's the moving away from. So the moving away from is maybe, maybe you have a lot of pain. 
Maybe you've got, you know, those knees that aren't happy, you've got those shoulders that aren't working. Um, you've got, I don't know, you know, there's all the things that happen in our bodies. You've got things going on and you don't want to be there anymore. So if you can use that motivation, it's just a different kind of motivation, but it's still the same thing. It's still motivation. The motivation is either, either moving toward what you want or you're moving away from what you don't want. So remember, it is a learned behavior and we'll definitely, we definitely dive into how to, how to become more motivated because it's a big deal. I'm not always motivated. I mean, not at all. I use lots and lots and lots of different ways to keep myself motivated. Um, so, so it's like I said, like we do what leads us to an action we want to take, like moving toward or moving away. Um, one of the tricks about motivation is that all it takes is a very, very, very small step toward what you want and the ability to keep taking those small steps because, I mean, <laughs> like it's a, it's a rule, right? A body in motion stays in motion. And it's true though, right? Like, I mean, I have it here and I'm kind of like, oh yeah, you know, it's a law, but it's true if you ever think about it. It's like when we use the, um, one of the things that I like to, to show people if they're having trouble with motivation is it's the 10, 20, 30. So you start out with saying, okay, you know, I don't really want to work out. Not my gig, not my interest, but I got to do it because, you know, hips aren't feeling good or whatever, which, whatever our reason is. So if you just start with 10 minutes, 10 minutes is generally enough to move you into the next time of 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Like, one little step leads to another. Another way of, of working that, another way of being motivated is what we call an open loop. So whenever, like if you've ever gone to the gym and if you, if you go to the gym and you work with a trainer, like one of the things a trainer will do is maybe you're doing 15 reps, right? You do 15 reps, 15 reps, but then that last set of 15 reps, are, it's a higher weight. So it's gonna be harder and you're tired. It's all the things, right? So you might start counting up one through 10, but then when you get to 10, you start counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. The reason for that is that when you count from five to one, right? Um, that gives us an open loop in our mind. It's an open loop, our brains hate them. We won't stop it too. Like I use this all the time when I have, when I'm training myself, or when I'm working with somebody, I'll say, okay, you know, if you've got to do a high intensity training session, um, maybe you're going to do five sets of that high intensity, right? You start counting at five. You do set five, set four, set three, set two, set one. Because it's so hard for us to stop at two. So just, there's like little tricks of motivation, but know that motivation is a learned behavior. Um, so those are some of the tips. Uh, and other ideas for motivation, like know whether you're, know what kind of person you are. Like, are you driven visually? Are you driven audibly? Like, how, how are you? Like, a lot of people are visual, okay? If you're visual, then you put the things that you want to do. Like for myself, I'm, I'm not going to turn my computer, but on my wall, just, just to my right, is nothing but a, a one-week dry erase board. And every week, I've had that damn thing, for, <laughs> it's, it's tacky. I've had it for probably 20 years now. Every week, I start on um, I start on Mondays, or I do it on Sunday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I put everything up there that I'm gonna do for the week when it comes to a workout. It is in my face, okay? I can't miss that dry erase board because it's right above everything else I do. So it's visual, I'm visual. So I know that I've got that up there. The other piece of it is that I also know that I love to check things off. You know, I am one of those people when it comes to a to-do list, I'll write something on a to-do list so I can check it off. It's, you know, and, and I'm not that unusual to do that. So I check off everything I do on that dry erase board. So it keeps me going, keeps me motivated. So those are just a couple of quick tips. Um, so remember that we can have positive motivation, which is moving toward what you want, pleasure, um, know what you want and how to be able to use it. So one of those things is that just a quick, for instance, on here, um, 
I had a client, I have a client, um, when we first started working together, she said, she came to me and she said, um, okay, all I really need to do is lose some weight. I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> anything else? She's like, nope, nope, just want to lose some weight. I was like, okay. Um, why do you want to lose weight? And she said, well, I, my, I think it was her son. My son's getting married and I need to look good at that wedding. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Um, so what will feel looking good at that wedding do for you? And she said, well, it'll make me, it'll make me feel good. I was like, okay. So if you feel good about how you look, then how does it make you feel about your body? And she's like, well, it'll make me feel a whole lot better about my body. I said, okay, well, let's talk about your body. If you're feeling good about your body, like if you're really feeling like, hey, you know what? I'm rocking it. Then what are you going to do? And she's like, she's like, well, well, actually, you know, I haven't felt good about my body for years. If I felt good about my body, I would be doing all kinds of things that I used to do. I would be, you know, I would be going on long hikes. I would be playing tennis. I would be doing like, I would be playing with the kids in the pool. I won't get in the pool right now because I'm not about to put on a swimsuit. So she's like, all of a sudden she realized that she's gone from a outside, not so po positive motivation to, okay, wait a second. If I feel good, these are the things I can do. So knowing how to use that positive motivation. And then for her, she was, you know, also moving away from pain at the beginning. Like she didn't want to show up at the wedding, not looking the way she wanted to look. Right. So that is a driver. It is a driver. I don't think it's as, um, I don't think it's that strong a driver because when we're moving away from things that we don't want, guilt, shame, feeling bad, um, all of those things, it, it's not a powerful emotion, but when we are moving toward the things that we do want, it is powerful. So, so the most you can do, or the more you can do of finding those positive, mo positive drivers, use them. Okay. Um, so the next piece, and this is a, this is like a, this is a nuts and bolts. This is not like thinking, not like we're talking about in the brain right now, but this is nuts and bolts. If you want to get consistent with your fitness, Okay. Most people who come to me do want to get consistent with their fitness for whatever reason. Um, the first and simplest way is to have a fitness plan. Okay. I think it varies for everybody. If you've followed me at any time at all, you know that I am um, a little disparaging, disparaging of cookie, what I call cookie cutter fitness plans, because we've had these bodies for a long time. We know what we can do and what we can't do. And if you just follow, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to call anybody out, but there's certain, like, there's certain things that are like, here's your plan. And this is what you've got to do. And this is how you've got to eat and blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't work for everybody. So you do need a plan that works for you. But once you have that plan, and, and I'll just talk very briefly. So in that plan, there's a few things that you want to have. One of them is you need to have some mobility. Okay. There's, there's like, in fact, I'm going to get to this in just a second, but I'm jumping ahead on our, on our slides here because I just want to say this. Actually, let me stop. Let me not jump ahead for once in my life. And let me just say a tip for using your motivation is once you have that plan that we're going to talk about, schedule it. Okay. Do exactly what I said a minute ago, which is, you know, you, you just take your, your plan and you put it somewhere where you can see it, do it by a week by week basis, but just do it. Because when you see that and when you have it, it's going to work. It's going to work. It works so much better. And, and I've, I know that I've got a lot of people on here who um, are not on camera right now, but who I work with, who have all done the same thing. They have learned that once they schedule it and they get serious about scheduling it, it sticks. Okay. So see, I told you I was going to get to that plan. <laughs> so a couple of things. When you're making your own fitness plan, what you need is you need to have 
enough time to do the things that you want to do. Okay. And this, this sounds like duh, Kelly, but, but think about this for a second. A lot of times when I come back to that first, those first couple of things that people tell me, they tell me they don't have time, right? I have no time. I can't do this. So um, know that it's going to take some time to do this. It just is, right? We've, we've taken lots of time in our life to not do it. So it's going to take some time. Um, what that means is you have to give it a priority. You have to prioritize. And, and you don't have to make this like do or die. But it does have to be something that you say, okay, this is important enough to me that I'm going to carve out 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be a ton either, y'all. Like, I mean, there's that point where you might want to start doing more, but starting doesn't have to be a lot of time. Um, it has to be the right activity. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about the fact in a minute that we need a mix of mobility, strength, and um, cardio. Okay. But you can get those in a lot of different ways because something else, the third thing people say to me the most is I don't want to go to the gym three days a week. I'm not going to go to the gym five days a week. You don't have to. Okay. We don't have to, but we do have to figure out how to put some of these things in. So you've got to have the right activities. Um, your lifestyle has to be at least slightly conducive to this. Okay. Like it just has to, you've got to be coming back to, okay, this is of priority to me and I'm willing to give it part of my lifestyle. And then the easiest way to make this work is to have yourself realize that this is a long game, all right? Like there was a point there probably in all our lives when we might've thought, oh, you know what? I need to lose five pounds or whatever it is. Doesn't matter what it was. I need to lose some weight. So you know, you dieted for a month, you got on the on the treadmill for a month and or you started running or whatever it is. And that weight went away. And that was that. <laughs> our bodies change. OK, um, our body structures change. And what we could do back then at 20 to drop that weight. Like I, I remember very clearly what we did when I was that age in college. We just quit eating. <laughs> I'm sorry, we would get by on cheese and cracker or those tacky little cracker cheese things that came in a package and do it for, you know, two weeks. And then all of a sudden you're back into the jeans. Our bodies don't put up with that crap anymore. They can't, they just can't. So um, we've got to look at this as a long game. Okay. And this is, that's what this is. So um, what you need and then what you're going to do are activities. You're going to schedule. You've got outcomes and you need short-term goals too. Okay. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but I'm just going to say it again. Cookie cutter programs do not work for everybody, especially at, okay, I'll just put it this way, especially after about 30. And then again, after about 50. And it's because we start losing muscle um, at about 30. And then at about 50, give or take, um, when you go through menopause, your hormones shift. And then you have another big hit of muscle structure and muscle loss. So, so know that what you got away with at 20, you're not going to get away with now, but it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter because there's so many things that we can do now that work. Okay. I have a client who asked me the other day, she is, um, She's about 67, I think. And so we were putting together a plan for her. And it was probably the our second week that we met. And she said to me, she went, Kelly, you know, I've been doing this for the week that, that you told me. And I'm liking it. And I'm excited that I'm doing it. But you have to tell me something. Would you be honest with me? And I said, yeah. She said, at 67, is this going to matter? <laughs> like, Am I ever going to gain any muscle? Is this, am I wasting my time? And instead of being like, rah, 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 I said, you know what? Yes, and, yes, and. And that yes, and is, I think I sent her probably 25 scientific papers that, you know, showed, like absolutely showed unequivocally that yes, you can gain muscle at 60, 70, 80. So it, it, our bodies can still do everything we want them to do. We just have to be a little bit more careful. Um, 
And just remember a good plan incorporates all your pillars. So movement and nourishment, motivation and accountability, mindset and habit shifts. Okay. These are, um, and we're not going to dive into all these today because otherwise I'll be, I'll keep you guys for days, but, but just high level. So movement is what we're talking about mostly today. Okay. And we'll, we'll dive into this a little bit more in a minute. Nourishment. You know what? It really is true. We are what we eat. And if we don't believe that, like, you know, we can tell that it, our bodies change when we don't eat well. And when I say eat well, I don't mean, I don't believe in a lot of diets. In fact, I don't believe in any real diets actually. Um, but I do believe in eating good food that help, that nourishes us. Okay. And for all of you who have already been an athlete, either now or at some point in your life, you know, like food is fuel. Food is fuel and we need it. So nourishment, motivation and accountability. We talked about motivation. We're not going to dive into accountability today, but accountability is one of those things that um, makes fitness easier. Because when you feel like, um, when you feel like, oh gosh, you know what? I don't, um, I'm not, I don't feel like doing my stuff right now. I'm going to call, I'm going to tell a story on one of my friends. I think she's, I think, I think she's in here on another slide. But so one of our clients, she's in the accountability group. She happens to be in the same accountability group with me. We're, we do texts. We do a lot of text accountability groups in my company. So she's in my accountability group. She's sitting there. She tells me later that she's just like sitting in front of the gym. She was supposed to work out, but she didn't really feel like it. So she's like just playing on her phone. And she thought, well, I'm just going to text the accountability group and tell them that, you know what? I'm not going to go in today. I'll do it tomorrow. So she sends a text like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do this workout today. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and head home. And it just so happened that there were several of us on our phones at that moment. And her, the response is just like flew in. Like for me, I was like, get your butt in the gym right this minute. And someone else was like, you can't do that. You got to go. To... And so what happened was like all this to say that little teeny weeny bit of accountability from a group got her into the gym and shifted everything. She turned into someone who has been so consistent with her fitness for the last two years. I'm just blown away. Um, and then mindset and habit shifts. We are not talking about this at all today, but I will just say, well, I guess, you know, motivation is a mindset. So we have to change our habits if we need, we have to change our habits when we need to change them, change them. And we have to have the right mindset. It's kind of a done thing. All right, today we're just focusing on the movement portion of this. Okay. The first part is mobility and flexibility. This is probably, <laughs> Out of the three of them, this is this is usually the first one that no one wants to do. And mobility is nothing more than warming up your joints. If you think about it that way, if you just think about it, it's nothing more than warming up your joints. I mean, you can really get serious about it, and you can there's lots and lots of mobility options out there, but we need our joints to be warmed up, we need our joints to be happy. We need our joints, we need the fluid in our joints to be moving so that we can do what we wanna do with ease. I am a big fan of using myself as a guinea pig. So I've tested this one particular thing numerous times. Well, numerous times, probably 10 times I did this test. Five times I went out on a hike that I love to do. It's probably, I don't know, hour and a half hike if I'm moving fast. Hour and a half hike, I go out, I go out cold. I don't do it with my, mo I don't warm up before I go. Like I don't do my mobility moves. I just get out of the car, go. And at the end, usually fine. I mean, there may be a couple of things that feel a little twitchy, but you know, I'm fine. If I take that same exact hike, I get out of my car, I take eight minutes to do my warm ups. Okay. And this is nothing more. When I'm talking about this, I'm talking simple stuff doing ankle rolls, doing knee rolls, doing hip flex, hip, you know, like wiggling your butt, doing your hips, doing your shoulders, like doing your neck, simple mobility warmups, right? Takes me about eight minutes and eight minutes is a long time for me to do this. I am faster on that hike. I feel better on that hike when I finish and nothing hurts. 
So it's it's pretty like that is one person, <laughs> just a few a few uh, experiments. But if you try the same thing with yourself, you'll start noticing there's a big difference. Mobility matters. It especially matters the the harder we work out and the more we work out. So be willing to do some mobility. And when I'm talking about this right now, you can start with your mobility being nothing more than just moving all your joints. Shoulder up, shrugs, right? Arm swirls, like whatever you can do, do it with, do it gently, like don't push it, go easy and take care of yourself, but do it. I mean, one of my other favorites is like using what they call yin yoga, which is just very simple postures in yoga, gently held for a long period of time. So it's not like, you know, I, I've been to power yoga, not my gig. Um, yin yoga is where you just like do things very gently, but you find like, and I'm not going to go much deeper into this because <laughs> I'll lose everybody on this one, but yes, you want your mobility. Next piece is you need cardio. We need cardio. And in general, not always, but in general, most of the women that I work with are probably what I would call cardio addicts. I mean, I'm a cardio addict. If if I had my druthers, all I would do is just like go for long kayaks and go for long hikes and go for long bike rides. I love it. Like that's my thing. I love it. But I also know that it's not going to get us where we want to go but we do have to do cardio, okay? And you don't have to do tons of cardio either. Um, in fact, an hour or less is best. Um, you can do some long cardio, but but if, and okay, really, really, really like high level. At a certain stage, which is usually about when we hit menopause, um, if we start doing too much cardio, then we start burning muscle. We don't wanna burn muscle. <laughs> We want to build muscle. So, you know, an hour of cardio or less, you're brilliant. 20 minutes of high intensity, you're set. Um, and then you need some strength or re and resistance, right? Some form, okay? You can use, um, you can use weights, you can use the gym, you can use body weights, you can use bands, you can use, I mean, there's a million different ways you can use, you know, weights in your hands when you're walking. I mean, it's, there's so many different things that we can do, but in the end we have to, and, and this is a have to, we have to stress our muscles to a point where we start using them more. If, if in fact we want to um, live long and really well, <laughs> because the muscles are what's going to take care of us. There's a book out there. Um, it's a little dry, okay? I'll just tell you, it's a little dry. Uh, it's called Forever Strong. And I've ended up, well, I, I bought it and I ended up getting it on Audible because it was just not quite, just reading was getting kind of boring. But bottom line, she's done a very good job of telling us why we need strength. But I will just tell you, we all know we need it. We need it for our bones. We need it for, you know, long life, all the other things. So, and strength can be a lot of things, y'all. Um, it can be Pilates. Um, I mean, there's just so many, there's so many mixes and matches we can do here. So know that you can mix and match. Also know that if you want to jump on a one-on-one -on -one with me for a few minutes, I'll help you figure out some things that you love to do. I mean, that's easy. So the other things that, to think about, like one of them, injuries and pain points. Um, it's we probably haven't gotten this far in life without a few injuries and pain points, okay? You need to address them and you need to work with them. Um, usually my first, if I don't have, if I'm talking to a client and I don't have a good off the top of my head suggestion, I, I just tell them, you know, go to a PT, start there. I mean, there are lots of other levels that we can do, but you definitely, if you've got things that are holding you back, um, you want to make sure that you're dealing with them so that they don't stop you in life. Um, and then if, as far as food goes, you know, it comes back to, are you eating food as medicine or are you eating food as comfort? Um, 
usually when we're doing food as comfort, it's the things that we, we really shouldn't be eating. The um, highly processed carbs, the sugar, you know, all the things that, all the things that we learn to love, right? All the things that make us feel briefly, um, that, that light our brain up briefly, okay? And then um, the other thing is, is that you really wanna look at like life, you know, where's your life getting in the way of your workouts? And how can you change it? Um, we cannot always stop the things that show up that slow us down. Um, getting sick, traveling, taking care of somebody else, all of these things, right? We can't, we can't stop that. But what we can do is figure out ways to work around it. So it's being aware of that. Um, okay. How to make some lasting results. One of them is just flesh out the favorite things that you like to do. Um, another one is understand the power of imperfection. Okay. Like when you create a plan or when you have a workout plan or you have a, like a schedule that you set up, you don't have to be a hundred percent perfect at it. If you're hitting 80% of it, rock on really like life happens. If you're hitting 90% of it, you're like amazing. If you're hitting 100% of it, you're probably um, underestimating what you can do. So, so be willing to be okay with a little imperfection. Um, have what I like to call an MDM, which is your minimum daily movement. Minimum daily movement can be, can be your walking. It can be how often you get up from the chair. It can be, um, it can be anything but don't ever settle for less. I mean, one of the things I think that the tracking devices that we all seem to use are really helpful for, even, even steps, like, you know, steps are, steps are a funny thing because I found somewhere, and I don't remember now, like why the 10,000 steps a day was the thing. And it was just, it was just a challenge back, I think back in the seventies actually. But the trick with that is that if you do a certain number of steps a day, then you always have an MDM right? So you need to always have something to fall back on. Um, and then wild cards. What I like to call wild cards are those things that we can do that we love to do. Okay. And I think I've got a, yeah. Okay. So um, little wild cards, like for me, a little wild card is I make sure that usually um, barring nothing strange, I have at least one day a week when one of my workouts is something that I just stink and love to do. Maybe I'm going to go for a hike. Maybe I'm going to go for a bike ride. Maybe I'm going to go for a paddle. Um, I don't know. Like there's a lot of different things I love to do, but I make sure that one of my workouts is going to be that. I know um, a big one for a lot of people these days is pickleball, right? Like make sure that one of those workouts is pickleball or make sure one of your workouts is something that you're planning for. Um, I, I like to suggest that we keep a bliss list and a bliss list is all those things that you, um, that just light you up. A bliss list could be like, for me, my bliss list is, um, going for hikes. Like I just mentioned, going for kayaking, going to the beach and going paddling, um, going for bike rides, going out to listen to music. That's a bliss. Um, there's just a lot of different things that I really love to do. And I, I'm not going to run across the, the hall and get my list, but I keep that list in my journal. And it's always those things that are going to um, give me that little, little jolt of fun, little jolt of happiness at the end of the week, or maybe during the week. Um, so make sure that you've got some fun little wild cards. And then you want to make sure that you've got some big ones. And that's like, the things that are going to keep you on track and accountable. Maybe like one of my clients, she loves to do 5Ks. So she plans a 5K and then that's her big wild card that she's going to train for and plan for. Gives her something to look forward to. Um, for me, it's it's traveling. Like, you know, I love to go travel. So I make sure that when I'm doing my the travels that I do, I'm doing the exercises that I need to do for them. Like there's a joke in my household where whenever um, I start double doubling down on 
all of my weights and my upper body, especially feels like, oh, have you made a, have you made plans for a kayaking trip? And I'm like, yep, <laughs> because, you know, I know that I've got to be at this certain point to be able to go do what I want to do. So it could be any planned activity. It could be um, anything that's going to get you excited. Like, like I said a minute ago, one of my clients, she loves pickleball, loves pickleball. So that's been a big driver for her because now she's got that. They were actually like, when I say a big driver, they were doing um, competition. So finding those things that get you excited and doing them. Okay. Um, so quick recap. I want to keep you guys without having too much time here. So um, truly, I believe that creating a fit and healthy body has to be our number one priority. I know that so many of us have people that we care for, that we want to take care of, that, you know, are important to our life, in our lives, and we consider them our number one priority. And that's true. And in addition to that, if we're not taking care of ourselves, we can't take care of them. So we really need to make that a priority. And I said it a minute ago, but I'll say it again. A healthy woman has a thousand dreams and an unhealthy woman has only one. All right. Um, so things to know. Motivation is a learned behavior. If you can find small, small steps and take them, a body in motion stays in motion. You need all of these three, mobility, mobility and flexibility. I put them together. Cardio and resistance training. We have to do them all. I mean, and I, I am, I'm a, worse, I'm a person who doesn't like the word have to or should, but we really have to, because if we don't, we're not going to have the, the health that we want for as long as we want. Um, and then Patty, I'm quoting you right there. So Patty's on the scale on the, um, on the call today, but she said this to me and I don't know, I doubt you even know this Patty on my wall is a sticky note that says from Patty, you don't have to kill yourself to do this. <laughs> and it was like, it was like a, um, a revelation to her one day, but but it's true, right? You don't have to kill yourself to do this. You just do it and keep having fun doing it. Um, so remember, you do need a plan. It needs to be scheduled. Um, you need to have awareness of food. And when I say awareness of food, um, awareness of food is not a diet. Like, I, I don't, I don't think that. Well, I know that if you look at the at the um, studies, diets don't generally work. In general, we tend to lose the same weight that we gain, that we lose, that we gain, that we lose, that we gain, that we lose. Like that's, it's like that same certain amount of weight. But what does work is when you find food that makes you feel good and not like, you know, not like that little dopamine hit, but makes you feel good. Food that fuels your body, food that, um, is you know the kind of the kind of stuff that we know we should be eating lots of good vegetables you know healthy proteins super good carbs um it makes a big difference it just makes our bodies work better uh and another thing is is that the studies absolutely show like unequivocally that as women we need more protein now we just need it because couple of things happen. Protein will help you stay satiated so that you're not hungry all the time. But the other thing is, is that protein is what helps build muscle. Um, and there's like this thing, it's like, it's like a, the whole flip side of it is, is that for some reason we start wanting to eat less of it. Now, <laughs> full disclosure, for those of you who know me already, um, I didn't eat any protein my entire life. Like I've been a vegetarian since I was like 20. So nada, um, I've been lucky. I've been super lucky. I've been able to, I was able to get by for a very long time. And then there was a point there where all of a sudden I couldn't do it anymore. And I had to figure out how to get the protein that I needed. Um, so, so we need that. Um, you need an MDM, like that minimum daily movement. You need it, you use it and keep doing it. Um, and wild cards will keep you motivated. Okay. 
So these are just like a good start, okay? Um, and I don't want everybody just sitting here for hours with me, okay? But just know that these are a really good start. Um, what I'd like to say, these are some of the things that I can help you with. One of them is to create a very specific fitness plan tailored to what you want to do and then add accountability community and then a toolbox to that. What I would like to do is jump out of this presentation for just a second, if y'all are okay with that, and ask if there's questions. So for those of y'all who are on camera, um, go ahead. Actually, if you're not on camera, you can still unmute and ask questions. So does anyone have any questions right now? Or was I just so amazing that there are no questions here, which I doubt. <laughs> I'll give you a second. And the people who are fleeing from the questions are, are, are hanging up. Okay, anything? Okay, then I have a question for y'all. Um, what, is, what, is, what is something that you want this year for yourself when it comes to your fitness? What do you want? You can either type it in the chat. You can unmute and tell me. You, If you're um, not on camera, you can unmute your um, phone and you don't have to turn on your camera. But what's something that you want for yourself this year when it comes to your health and fitness? Weight loss. Weight loss. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. And then Sharon says she wants to improve her bone health. Okay. Who else? Anyone? Um, I can, yeah, what you got, Patty? Uh, knee health. <laughs> Bone knee health. health. Knee health. Yeah, joint, joint health. Joint health. Okay. Okay. Um, energy, I like that for Tracy, what Tracy's saying. Tracy wants more consistent energy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, Patty, I think we've got a call coming up. Let's talk about, let's talk about joints, but real okay. quick, real quick, I will tell y'all something. Um, whether or not you believe in this, I am, I'm a big believer in, um, certain supplements being very helpful. <laughs> I, I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a moment about a month ago with one of my dogs who, caught me on the side, he, he leaped sideways, he weighs about 85 pounds and he hit me on the side of my knee. And I have no, like, I, I'm lucky. Like my knees have never, I don't even know I have knees. Like they never bother me. And he whacked me and it wasn't that I fell down from the hit. It was such a sudden, like, <gasps> there was like this shock, this body shock. Angela knows this stuff, like this is what she does. And like, this is total body shock, just like, and I crumbled um, and I came home and I thought, wait a second, <laughs> like, is this the beginning of, is this the, be I'm no different than anyone else. Is this the beginning of the end? <laughs> That's what I thought, right? Um, so, so I did a few things. One of them was I immediately uh, did some of the things that I know to do. Um, I actually looked at some, some, some supplementation that I'm using that's like a, collagen building um, in your ligaments. And I can, I'll show you, I'll share that with you, Patty, when we get on the call. But I do believe, and and then I also like, you know, I also had, I don't think she's on the call. So one of our client, one of our people who's also one of our coaches is Jamie. And mm -hmm. Jamie does a lot of mind body work. And mm -hmm. she talked me out of the, out of the, you know, like I was in that, that, accelerated state of concern mm -hmm. you know is this the beginning of the end so she talked to me about that got me you know got me back settled but i do believe that there's a lot that we can do for joints for um mm -hmm. pain some of it is you know some of it may need to be mobility some of it may need to be strength some uh, i've seen people's joints get better just by starting to move more mm -hmm. <laughs> again and again yeah. yeah um and and you know there's like so much that we can do 
so if something happens and you get into that state where you're like, oh, I'm all afraid, don't be afraid. Like, don't be afraid. There are people like, like Angela or Jamie or me, or there's lots of people out there that, you know, this is, it's like, bring it back down to what can we do with our bodies? Mm -hmm. And then how can we fix them? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so, so I'm going to jump over here. Uh, Sharon, Brown Health. Well, you're doing something really good right now, which is going to, through that summit. And then of course there is weights. There are weights. So we have to, I have to talk about weights again. <laughs> Sharon's one of my friends that has resistance to resistance <laughs> training. <laughs> but bone health, I mean, bone health gets better. I had a bad DEXA and then the next year it was better. So oh. it can get better. Um, oh. and, and I have a DEXA to go into soon. So I'll be able to tell you all, is it getting better? I think so. Um, mm more consistent energy. So Tracy, to have more consistent energy, there's lots of things that happen, right? One of them is, um, one of them is movement. Movement gives energy. One of them is sleep. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times that what will happen is that sleep will, um, well, let me put it this way. That thing I said at the very beginning about a cascading effect of good, um, Sleep is usually somewhere in that cascade. So movement helps us sleep. So does a lot of other stuff we can talk about later. But um, then, you know, when you've got better sleep, then you wake up with better mood. You've got more energy. You're moving. You have more energy. Movement gives energy. So um, and food, food. We're doing sugar freedom next month. So y'all should come to sugar freedom. Um, sugar freedom is nothing more than getting off the sugar, alcohol, and processed carbs for a month. But it's, um, A, it's <laughs> for someone who ate pasta for the first 45 years of her life, 50 years of her life only, um, it was a bummer to, to cut that back some. But still, it, it makes a big difference. And then um, muscle mass and bone. Okay, muscle mass and bone health, I think, are the number one things that we all need to be looking at, all of us. Um, and then Mary Jane said, consistent weekly workouts. Good job. Um, consistency is what makes this all work. It is. Consistency is what makes all of this work. So any other, any other pieces to this year that you want to add to this, anybody, as far as what your goals are for 2024? I'm I'm going to share something. Um, so my goal is actually not a fitness goal, but it's um, I'm studying homeopathy. And so you can buy homeopathics. This would be Arnica. Oops, I did have it right. Arnica Montana is you can find it as a gel form. It's also super beneficial as a little tiny sugar pill. But like falling over from your dog hitting you, landing, bruising. This is super great for soft tissue injury. It, I used it. <laughs> yes, good for you. <laughs> so Arnica lives in my house yes. all over the place. <laughs> Everybody should have it. It's just the yeah. best remedy. It's it's really good. And and I use it for burns in the kitchen. I mean, yeah, thank you for saying that because there it's homeopathy is one of those things that I don't think is as strange as it used to be. And no, people not. are starting to realize that it works. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's impressive. Like it really works. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And for Patty too, Patty, like, you know, it can help with pain. Um, yeah. 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 Thanks. Who else? Any, any other things? Okay. I am going to, I, since I jumped all over here, um, I'm going to jump back to our, actually, before I jump back, let me just see. Um, okay. Yeah. Let me just add, I want to add one slide to what we've been talking about because I think it's important and then we'll start wrapping up. So the people who's the women who succeed, um, that I work with, that I see who succeed, 
They are the ones who know that health and fitness is a long game. Quick fixes are one thing, but they don't work for the long run. Um, when, whenever you get that feeling that time is getting short, you know that there's still so much more to enjoy in life. That there's a there's a point there where I run into people who fall on one side or the other of this. And if they feel like time is getting short and they might as well give up, they'll never succeed. But the ones who just have so much more to enjoy in life makes a huge difference. Um, you know that there's stuff missing, like we all said, right? Maybe it's the energy, maybe it's the bone strength, maybe it's the muscle. Um, and you just have to create the right plan to have it work and, and then stick to it. You want you know, accountability options and you need whatever it takes to help you to follow through, okay? Like consistency really is the key to all of this. And it's little steps. It's not big, huge leaps, it's little steps. And little steps, guys, I am no different than anyone else. I hate little steps. I do, I want big, huge, massive, let's have like one week of doing this and I'm fine. It just, you know, it's the little steps that make it work. Um, you're willing to do whatever it takes. Sometimes it's just not fun, but we still be willing to, we're still willing to do whatever it takes. And then of course, <laughs> we all need that touch of adventure in our soul and it can be any kind of adventure that gets you excited, okay? Um, this is Pam that I talked about really early, a quick minute ago. She was the one who was sitting in front of the, she's sitting in front of the gym, just playing on her phone texting. And we were all like, get your butt in the gym. Um, and then I don't think, I don't think any of these, uh, people are on the call right now, but, um, one of them said that, you know, community, community is huge having community. In fact, if, if any of y'all are following along with, um, the blue zone documentary, I mean, that's one of the big pieces that they talk about. And it's so true. Community matters and friends don't let friends slide backwards. Um, so I'm going to send you this presentation so that you've got it. And I would love, I would love to be able to, ch to chat with everybody and help them however I can. Um, this is from our Costa Rica trip. One of our people being very brave and jumping off the Tarzan swing. Um, and then I'll just let you know if you, if you're, if you are interested, there are two ways I work with people. I either work with people in the group program, which is our fittest freedom group. And there's a couple of people on here who are in the group already. Um, or I have a six month accelerator program. And what that is, is it's six months of full on, let's create a plan, let's get together together every two weeks, let's make sure it's working for you. Uh, let's give you all the accountability you could possibly need. And what you can do in six months is huge. It's like I said a minute ago that, you know, nobody wants to start small and just take little steps. Well, if you take little steps for six months, Holy smokes, the difference that we can make in life is so big. So for everybody who's on here, thank you again for being here. I will tell you this. I will drop all this information to you. I have a little like a little gift that I'll send you this evening. It'll go out. Um, I think I think it goes out after the other call, call starts. Um, but at this moment in time, I'm going to stop recording. So if there is anybody on here. Let me just do this. Thank you guys for all being here.